Now, thanks for staying with us. A person with superiority uh, complex is ironically a person who feels inferior and makes up for their feelings of inadequacy by acting superior towards others. It can be compounded by the supervisor making overt statement that affirms his or her superiority over the subordinate, often in the presence of others. Common phrases you hear in Nigeria during an interrogative session, for example, is, do you know who I am? Do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> who is your father? Where do you live? All these statements gives off a sense of superiority and suggest that the lesser person, in quote, has no basis to speak. If Nigeria must read ourselves of poor leadership, how can the citizens even ask uh, for better governance if they aren't allowed to ask questions. Now remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa 1 with the hashtag Ways or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. Now ladies. Mm -hmm. Can I point out what I liked about what you just read? What? How, <laughs> in, how superiority complex equal to inferiority complex. Mm -hmm. That got me. Mm -hmm. So you're still inferior. It's yeah. just another form yeah. of you trying it's to actually, play it's that actually out. It's actually is a is a sign of inferiority. Yeah, you understand. Yeah, exactly. So it's embedded. It's they are interwoven. I mean, that's the word I would use. So, you yeah. know, yes, you know. So I, I and I I really thought about a lot of things. Now this story, for those that want to understand the background story, why we chose this topic um, today was from it's coming off of the back of um, Femi Fani Kayode that had an altercation with a journalist, calling him stupid, calling him all sorts of names. Do you know who I am? You know, do you know, um, um, I've you been in this all, business. You think I'm all, you those, you think I'm all those people to. and all of that. And you know, at some point, um, for me to call, do you know, I find it very difficult for me to call another human being stupid. stupid. Yeah. Do you understand? So when I see people insult people loosely, I keep wondering where... He reduced him. You understand? He reduced him to bits. It brings you as the and person. And the question wasn't it brings disrespectful. You it wasn't. It so wasn't. my point is, so now, I want us to, to bring this home, you know, in terms of conversation. Mm -hmm. Because we see this happen and we see it play all the time, where we as citizens of Nigeria, we're not allowed to ask questions. Because somebody is the president of, of Nigeria, you ask a question and it's now maybe um, uh, turned into... You don't have respect. A, you know, you don't have respect. I mean, like, so where do we even draw the line between, you know, respect and, and superiority and um, would I call it confidence? Where do we draw the line? You know, maybe you should come first, Aiken. So, well, I think that this thing sits, the whole issue that we're talking about sits even deep into our traditions, starting from a home, as we mm -hmm. always say, the family is a basic unit. And recall, and I, I know some families where they couldn't talk back to their father. And so let me not use the word talk back. Talk back is not correct. Talk back is wrong. But ask you could not ask questions. You can't ask why. Or have a conversation where you make a contribution. So when you bring up people in an environment where you're not allowed to question the authority, it is expected that when I go out and I'm, I have that power and I have that authority, people should not talk to me mm. anyway because... I have that power and I have that authority over you. Yeah. So it just goes deep down. And as you reeled out when we started, it's affecting every first set of the, um, of the, of the um, society. And that's why someone that should serve you, I don't even get it. Mm. You, you are serving me and I cannot ask you for You are a public card. servant. That it, is it, the word. It had happened to me, Uwa, uh, on... Twitter, I think I demanded for a certain report. Let me not just call the person. I demanded for a, a public report. And the person said, okay, if I wanted it, I should go and bring my money and let them run the survey. And this was a public officer. I was mm -hmm. so disappointed because his office was supposed to give that report every year. And we didn't have it for three years. So Can this is how bad it gets. It gets. Sansi, mm -hmm. let me hear your... Your well, I would like to attribute it to um, um, character because ideally, when you're in a public office, the spotlight is on you. So you need your you need double effort on your character. You need proper training, proper what's the, the English word again? Yeah. Yes, you know, because you are serving the public and your life is exemplary to a lot of people. And so, uh, for me, and there is also the age the age factor. I'll tell you a story, right? When I was um, in a TV show um, back in the days, I didn't 
tell my age i was really young then but i've always looked older than my age so one of those days uh one of those years it was my birthday so i decided to come up and say you know what this is how old i am and guess what from that day onwards people started looking down on me i would make contribution and you know, they're like you don't she's know what you're saying she's a small but prior to that i would say something and they're like oh sandra fantastic point you know <laughs> yeah and it, it hurts me and from then i i started hiding my age because there's just this factor that that being youthful equals inexperience exactly. so if 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 i'm younger, younger than you that and there's also this belief that they say um what an elder sees sitting down, a young person cannot see it climbing the mountain, which is true in some cases, but it doesn't equal everything. Yeah. Otherwise, our parents will not be asking us to teach them how to operate computers. <laughs> You know, it, you it's know. so interesting when you said youthful equals experience. Yeah. Inexperience. Inexperience, sorry. Inexperience. So does, does, does this not suggest to you why we keep recycling old people? in positions of authority, in positions of leadership in Nigeria. Because now they presume that because you're a young person, you do not, you do not have the, the right or you do not have the expertise or you don't have the experience to be, to be able leader. to handle the leadership positions. Yes. Does this not tell you where our problem is coming from in Nigeria? So mm -hmm. I, I am wondering now, how, how do we even start? Where do we start from? Because in schools, right? I, I read a tweet um, um, NASA sent that was tweeted by Autumn. He was talking about... Uh, 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 yes. Orindam, okay. Yeah, that he was... I, I keep calling him Otto. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Otto, yeah, Otto, Otto, yes. yeah. I don't know how to pronounce the other Slums one. So I just call him Otto. You know, he, you know when he talked about um, students, the relationship between students and, and teachers, teachers, that mm. you are in class, right? You are not allowed as a student to ask your teachers certain kinds of questions. Teachers just expect you to, you know what, regurgitate whatever it is that yes. I've taught. You're not, allowed, you're not allowing the child to, to be creative, to process. think. So now the child is thrown out in the world and the child cannot do jack. You now wonder where did it come from. We have intelligent minds in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. young people that are doing exceptionally well but when we come with this superiority that because you are older or because you live in banana island and i live in uh, in mushy yes. it means that yeah, I do not, girl. i'm a mushing girl you know it means that i do not have the right to talk to you so all of these cultures that we have built over the years is part of the the bane now that we are suffering in our society you mm -hmm. know do you want to add to that before I bring in our guests? Yes, I want to. And, and where you mentioned is a start point, education. And when, I, when I'm talking about education, I'm not just talking about schools. We have to intentionally educate people as to, one, I think accountability and having a conversation. We need to change our curriculum for the future. Mm -hmm. Because the way our curriculum, I used to call our curriculum, um, a colonized curriculum teaching you how to obey mm, and yeah. how to repeat. Just gurgitate. You know, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something. Okay, sorry to cut you. I remember in school, both secondary school, university, um, during dictation or uh, during tests, you would write, okay, this is how I understand this. No. And the, the teacher or the lecturer would say, this is not what I gave you. This is what is in my notes. This is not what is in my exactly. notes. Exactly. Yeah. And that's and how so you we fail. have to go to changing that, the way we are being evaluated, the way that we're being taught has to change and we have to change the people teaching the people no but now let me ask a question do you think our leaders are ready to change this educational structure because why no, because we the have fact made that change no be, no because wow. the for, the fact that we are in a position that we do not know certain things is of advantage to them right i hope you know that i know but why, do, do you see that the culture mm -hmm. is changing as we're going we're demanding our children more. are asking questions we are on this show we're talking about things yes. we're asking for, for we're demanding for people to be responsible people to take action so it's coming mm. it's coming but we need to get there faster we need to be able to train children right. that can teach for, um, that can think for themselves and, and be able to soon. stand Mm. you know for themselves and demand for the right for the right questions okay so mm. let me bring in our guest now peter Kwatewa is an entrepreneurial um, result-oriented corporate law specialist with diversified and extensive experience in areas of finance telecommunication intellectual property oil and gas regulatory compliance litigation company secretariat management amongst others now providing expert counsel and analyzing structuring negotiating and closing sophisticated business transaction so it is good to have you yes <laughs> Peter <Patewa. laughs> thank you for joining us so which transaction do you want to close for us in this superiority matter because you see 
Um, <clears throat> I, I know you've been hearing our conversation. Maybe you'd like to jump in first before we ask um, some questions. All right. What I, what I have to say is that the issue of superiority is ingrained. I mean, the culture of unmingled show of superiority is pervasive in our society, partly because we have entrenched materialism above everything else. Even the masses who get the short end of the stick are themselves complicit in the way they lionize people with material acquisitions. So I'd like to open with that statement by saying that it's, it's deeply rooted in our system as a people. And it goes beyond just political office holders. You find constantly a founding psychophantic league of hoi polloi, the masses, who are regularly following all these so-called big people and patronizing them. So it's more or less like a license for continue to intimidate me, continue to oppress me. I like it that way. Wow. So it cuts across the society in very diverse ways. So basically, he, uh, you're, you're saying that this is because the society is naturally blinded by power. I, I think it, it would be key, the society also welcomes it. Because what I get from you is that the society in a way welcomes it. Um, if I'm a wealthy person, they allow me to tread get on them and things. get away with things so, because of who I am. Mm. So, so, Peter, where do you think this is coming from? Is it poverty or where is this coming from? I think it's, um, it's, it's like I mentioned earlier, it's where we place our emphasis. Let me give you a quick no, analogy I'm asking that, that perhaps typifies our start, reality as so a people. So, Peter, I need you to understand the question. Why did we start right. to place our emphasis on the materialistic, um, you called it entrenched materialism, right? Why, why did it even start in the first place? What is the root cause of that? It has been a long time coming. When, when you say the root cause of materialism, we have seen mostly government officials giving to profound orgy. We celebrate people who display wealth. Some of them... They have translated the corporate wealth, the national wealth, into personal wealth. We celebrate them. So it's a case of might is right. If you're wealthy, if you have a lot of money, people celebrate you. So everybody tends to follow in uniform mediocrity people who are rich. So if you are not rich, if you're not wealthy, it appears as if you don't have a voice. Mm. So this is a system that has been around for a long time. So we don't even celebrate intellectualism. We don't celebrate people who are intellectually rigorous. We celebrate primordial acquisitions. We celebrate people who are materialistic, people who have assets, people who have cars and so on and so forth. So that's where our focus as a people has been. Mm. Right. And okay. I, was, I was going to give you an analogy, if I can put that in quickly, that I said perhaps typifies our reality as a people. A friend of mine told me, about a rather ludicrous submission that her little daughter made. She said in substance, mommy, daddy is the boss of the house. Hmm. Daddy will boss you, you will boss me, I will boss my younger brother. Hmm. So it is hierarchical bossing. Hmm. So in Nigeria today, depending on your station, your state or your estate, you boss the next man on the ladder. So that kind of society is miserable, short and brutish. And I can imagine Shakespeare looking down on us today and saying, Think not that these are purely sages whose beard and porch are largely of size, lest the goats through all ages should also be classified amongst the wise. Hmm. So, like, a society, we're just running riot in this society. If a man is not wealthy, if a man does not have all the material assets we want to celebrate, we don't pay attention to them. It's, it's a sad state of affairs. That I think Definitely. Need. Obviously, since you're a huge fan of William Shakespeare, or maybe you studied uh, literature in school. He's a lawyer, <laughs> well, lawyers need okay. literature. So, um, given the uh, funny uh, FFK incident that obviously brought about this this topic, I'd like us to bring it to the workplace. How do you handle a boss who has this? superiority complex you talked about money but it's not just about money sometimes you have but yeah power you have bosses who maybe have a shop where they pay 150k and the the servants uh, 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 or whoever is handling the shop they may be paying 20k or 30k person. but the way they're shouting on the person like what do you mean why is this do you know who i am so in in situations like that i'm looking at the lower level and the higher level 
as an employee, how do you handle that? A boss who has superiority complex. So the first thing I have to say is that as an employee, you must make up your mind how you respond to scathing criticisms. Very important. Would you, call you find us, people would you, who have been you, people who have been pummeled in the workplace to the extent that they have clearly defined their own limitations and selected their chains. Ships don't sink because they go through water. They only sink when water gets into them. So the starting point is that as an employee who is under a very unreasonable boss, you must first make up your mind that, well, like they say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words don't hurt my soul. Okay. So no matter what they say, you must not allow another man's opinion of you to get to you. That's a starting point. And of course, we have avenues and methods, systems by which such indiscretions are handled in the workplace. Okay. Okay, so I, I wanted to talk about something. You wanted to have yeah, a continued well, I, I, question. I, I, I wanted I to ask, way. but what if a person who doesn't have that mental strength to say, you know what, sticks and ships and all that may break <laughs> my bones. <laughs> Sorry, it's sticks not funny. Stones. You know, what, what about what about that kind of person? Does it, is it, do we just let it go that because this person is the boss, say, let me just work on just, my mentality? No, I would say you know? if, the, if the work environment, maybe you would agree with me, Peter, quite a while, if the work environment is not soothing me, I would rather walk away and be, and so I go, I go where I am appreciated and not where I am tolerated. So a, a coach of mine taught, um, taught me this a long time ago. You know, always be where you are appreciated and not where you're tolerated. So when, when, I, when I'm appreciated, it shows in the way you treat me as a human being. You know, regardless of whether I am, um, what's it called? I am your, 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 what's it called? No. House help. Your nanny, house help or whatever. It depends. Body. So I, I would say walk away from an, a, a, a negative environment. If the workplace is not healthy for me, I'll walk away. Yeah, I, I think I'll go with you that sometimes mm. you need to take a decision for yourself because no one can take that decision Absolutely. for you. Absolutely, mm. yeah. I'd say count the cost and take the decision. Yeah. Okay, so over to my question. Yeah. And I'm so happy we're talking to you and you are in the legal system. Now, how does this play in the legal system? And, and it's very cogent to ask this question because that's what we look for, um, look towards for justice and all that. But does this superiority complex, does it play in, in the legal system as well? And how has it affected, you know, the legal system? Well, like I mentioned, it's pervasive in our society. You find it at home, you find it in commuter buses, you find it even on TV panel, panels. Everybody is yelling in this country. Uh, we have basically thrown caution to the wind. It is no different in the legal system. Oh. So you find, you can find in court a more senior lawyer trying to make sure they stifle you, they muzzle you, and make sure you don't talk. At the end of the day, it's up to you. What I say to younger people is that every man has one youth. And considering the consequences of employing youth well, he has reasons to think himself rich. Once youth is gone, all the wealth in the world cannot purchase another. Mm -hmm. So it plays out everywhere. It plays out in the courtroom. It plays out in the offices. As someone mentioned, one of, uh, one of you mentioned that you walk away. For how long will you continue walking away? So you must develop that thick skin because, I mean, people with indiscretion are in excessive supply. You find them everywhere you go. So you can't keep being the loser everywhere you go. So you must make up your mind that regardless of what this person is saying, you know your worth and you will not allow what another man says about you to get to you. So okay. that it's very crucial for us to realize that. We will go on a break. <laughs> when we return, I will answer Mr. Peter. Stay with us.